Julius Caesar Act 1 Scene 2 Hello students welcome back to my channel Jana Home Tuition So today I have come with the MCQ question answers and some of the word book question answers which I'll be sharing with you So let us first discuss the multiple choice question now this multiple choice question is from the word book called Morning Star Question number 1 Caesar dismissed the soothsayer when he warned him of the Ides of March as option A, a daydreamer, option B, an ignorant, option C, a superstitious, option D, a feeble creature. Now, the right option here is option A, a daydreamer, because when the soothsayer warned Caesar, Caesar called him a daydreamer. Question number two, what would happen when Antonio would touch California during the traditional tradition foot race. Option A, she would be cured of insomnia. Option B, she would be cured of epilepsy. Option C, she would be cured of infertility. Option D, she would be cured of timidity. Well, option C is the correct answer because the Feast of Lupercal, which we all know, is a foot race where if any if uh, the barren lady is touched, then the barren lady will be cured of infertility. Question number three in the scene, who has been compared to a rider of a stubborn horse? Option A, Caesar. Option B, Cassius. Option C, Brutus. Option D, Casca. Option C, Brutus is being compared to a rider of a stubborn horse. Question number four, according to Brutus, which trait of Antony does he lack? Option A, bravery. Option B, liveliness. Option C, tactfulness. Option D, none of these. Option B, liveliness because... Brutus here says to Cassius that Cassius, I don't want to be in the procession because I am not as lively as Antony. Option 5. What did Cassius accuse Brutus of in this scene? Option A. Being unfriendly towards him, being too selfish, being too busy, being irrational. Option A. Being unfriendly towards him, that is towards Cassius. Question number 6. What reason did Brutus give for being unfriendly towards Cassius? Option A. Triumphant return of Caesar. Option B. Fear of losing his freedom. Option C. His own conflicting emotions. Option D. None of the, none of the above. So Brutus here gives a reason for being unfriendly towards Cassius is because he was suffering from some conflicting emotions. Option 7. What is meant by age O? As spoken by Cassius. Option A. Operation under Caesar's rule. Option B. The age of burden under monarchist. monarchist. Option C. The era of end of republic republicanism. Option D. None of the above. Option A. Operation under Caesar's rule. Here is the correct answer. Option. Question number 8. What does Cassius say to manipulate Brutus to his side? Option A. Brutus is godlike. Brutus cannot see his own worthiness. Brutus is more noble than Caesar. None of the above. So Cassius says many things. We see that uh, a long speech is there from Cassius to manipulate Brutus. But Cassius was highlighting in one thing again and again that Brutus cannot see his own worthiness. And he also said that if there would have been a mirror, Brutus here replies and says that if there would have been a, a mirror, then he would have been able to see his own reflection. Question number 9. To all the route, then hold me dangerous. What is meant by route and whom does it hold dangerous? Well, option C here is the right answer. Mop Cassius. Question number 10. From whom, For whom does Brutus say I love him well? Option A. Antony. Option B. Casca. Option C. Cassius. Option D. Caesar. Option D. Caesar is the right answer because Brutus here says that I love him well, that means I love Caesar well. Although Brutus here is understanding the fact that Caesar might become a dictator. Question number 11. Which virtue of Brutus is Cassius talking about in this scene? Option A. He loves Caesar more than himself. Option B. He loves honor more than he fears of death. Option C. He prefers death more than money. Option D. None of the above. So in that particular speech where Brutus was uh, telling to Cassius that he loves honor more than he fears of death. 
So option B, he loves honor more than he fears of death is here the correct answer. Question number 12. Cassius compares himself to which ancestor of his when he talks about saving Caesar from drowning? So Cassius here gives an example that's an allusion and that's of Aeneas. Uh, Aeneas here saves his old father and he carries his old father on his shoulder in order to save him. So just like that Cassius also saved Brutus from Sorry, Cassius also saved Caesar from drowning. So option A, Aeneas here is the correct answer. Question number 13. According to Cassius, Caesar is mortal because he is subject to Option A, drowning and fever. Option B, sickness and death. Option C, temptation and fear. Option D, superstition and fate. Well, option A, drowning and fever is here the correct answer because Cassius here uh, says that says to Brutus that Caesar uh, is being saved from drowning by Cassius and again Caesar uh, was um, Caesar had fever and where Cassius helped Caesar from overcoming that particular fever. Question number 14. What does Cassius convince Brutus of by giving examples of Caesar's drowning and sickness episode? Option A. Caesar is brave and sturdy. Option B. Caesar is prone to diseases. Option C. Caesar is not liked by people. Option D. Caesar is weak and vulnerable. So Cassius here convinces Brutus by saying that, see, Brutus, Caesar is just like us. He is weak. He is vulnerable. So option D here is the right answer. Question number 15. Which trait of Cassius' personality is revealed in this scene? Option A. Clever opportunist. Option B. Clever manipulator. Option C. Fear idealistic. Option D. Passionate politician. A passionate um, politician. So option B, clever manipulator here is the correct answer because Cassius was indeed very very clever and he was cleverly trying to manipulate Brutus and take Brutus to his side so that he might be able to, uh, with the help of Brutus, he might be able to assassinate Caesar. Question number 16, which characteristic trait of Brutus is revealed when he is confronted with making moral choices. Option A, slow, confused, idealistic. Option B, quick, active thinker. Option C, slow, deliberate thinker. None of the above. So we here see that the trait of Brutus here that is revealed is slow, confused, idealist. Option 17, Cassius says that Rome has space only for one great man. Who is the man Cassius is referring to? Well, Cassius here is referring to Caesar because People of Rome are mad for Caesar. They are ready to crown Caesar. So Cassius here says that, well, Rome has only one space for one great man and that is for Caesar. Question number 18. What does Caesar think about Cassius in this scene? Option A. He thinks too much and he is dangerous. He is too thin to be a capable warrior. He is too passive to be taken, to be given a task. He is too passive to be a warrior. Well, when Caesar sees Cassius, Caesar here reveals that to Antony. Then Antony says, this is the man who thinks too much. This Cassius, he thinks too much. And according to the perspective of Caesar, Caesar feels that Cassius is dangerous. So Caesar has got the power of foresight. He, he actually uh, is right to bring out the trait or characteristics of Cassius. 19. For whom does Caesar say that seldom he smiles? Again, it's for Cassius. Option A, Antony, Brutus, Cassius, none on the above. So Caesar here says to Antony that, See, Antony, Cassius is a man who seldom smiles. So option C, Cassius is here the right answer. Question number 20. Tasker's description of Caesar declining the crown thrice tells us which characteristic trait of Casca. He was a gossip monger. He had an irrational prejudice against Caesar. He had a favorable impression about Caesar. None of the above. Well, option B, he had an irrational prejudice against Caesar. Here is the correct answer. Moving on to question number one. This is the last MCQ from this particular word book. What does Cassius soliloquy at the end of this scene predict? Soliloquy here means talking to himself. We see at the end of act one, scene two, Cassius here continues to speak to himself and uh, he wants to be convinced that he had already already succeeded in manipulating Brutus. 
so here the options are brutus will not join them caesar would quell their their conspiracy c troublesome times ahead and d none of the above so here the correct answer is troublesome times ahead so let's move quickly to the contextual question uh, reference number 1 reference to the context number 1 where caesar antony caesar suits here here is having other conversation here it's about the feast of lupercal so question number 1 here is where does the scene takes place the scene takes place in a public square in rome so public square in rome or public street in rome here is the is the main keyword what have the characters referred to in the extract gone there the characters have gone there to celebrate the feast of lupercal which is a festival dedicated to fertility so we already have discussed that in our mcq so feast of lupercal is a food race where the festival is dedicated to fertility where if a barren woman is touched by a man in the, in the race we, the barren woman will be cured from the disease called infertility and he will be able to give birth so the key word here is to celebrate the feast of lupercal and fertility as well question number 2 what is the holy chase who is assigned to take the holy chase what is its significance so holy chase here is a part of the feast of lupercal that's the holy run so who is assigned to take the holy race here is mark antony the friend of julius caesar he is assigned so mark antony here is the key word and what is its significance again it's the same rep repetition of question number 1 the festival is supposed to make sterile women fertile and thus will be able to have children so sterile women fertile is here the main keyword you can also underline to have children question number 3 what instruction did caesar give to calphonia regard earlier regarding the holy chase which characteristic trait of caesar is revealed by his instruction well caesar instructed antony to touch calphonia caesar again and again repeatedly told antony that antony don't forget to touch my wife calphonia So Caesar instructed Antony to touch Calphonia during the holy chase. Why? Because believing that it would cure her infertility, because Calphonia was a barren lady, she was not being able to give birth. And Caesar here was quite superstitious. He believed that if Antony touched Calphonia during the holy chase, definitely uh, Calphonia would be able to give birth. So what does this reveal of Caesar's character? Yes, this reveals Caesar's superstitious nature and belief in omens. so superstitious and omens here is a key word give the meaning of shake off the sterile curse and do this it is performed shake off the sterile curse means to eliminate the curse of sterility or infertility and do this it is performed means that the task must be carried out immediately question number 5 according to the extract explain the type of relationship that existed between caesar and antony Caesar and Antony have a close relationship. Caesar trusts Caesar trusts Antony enough to give him the task of touching Calphonia during the holy chase and Antony is also shown to be very loyal to Caesar. So here close relationship close here is one keyword then Caesar trusts Antony trust is also another keyword. And just because Caesar trusts Antony so Caesar gave the responsibility to Antony to touch california so touching california here is a, yet another keyword and well antony is also shown to be very loyal to caesar so loyal here is yet another keyword so in this particular video i have discussed the mcqs and reference one from the word book of morning star i will be discussing reference two and the rest of the reference in my next video so keep watching my videos and please do like share and subscribe to my channel don't forget to press the bell notification so that as i update my channel with new insight you may get the notification so thank you for watching have a wonderful day